sorry. A warm welcome to this live streamed service at St. Michael and All Angels here in Prince George. You are warmly welcomed. And we would also like to welcome our sisters and brothers from the parishes in Northern British Columbia. We're thinking particularly about St. John the Divine in Cornell, St. Mark in Woodpecker, uh, St. Davius Church in Barkerville, and Grace Anglican in Prince George. Today, we are very excited and very happy to welcome our new Bishop-elect, Lincoln McCollum. And he's driven all the way up from Kamloops to be with us today. So please welcome him warmly. And he's going to stay for a question and answer session after the end of the live stream. So please, during the service, you can think of all sorts of questions that you want to ask him. <laughs> but you should also listen to his sermon because he's going to preach. So please enjoy the service and may you find peace and joy uh, throughout the whole service and the coming week. Thank you. Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires to know the will of your will, and from you most secret thoughts and plans. Hear our prayer. Lord, 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 hear our prayer. Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both in your laws in our hearts. We beseech you. Please stand. Glory be to God on high, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, 
Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sit to listen for the word of God. Our first reading this morning is from the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, verses 13 to 16. For neither is there any God beside you whose care is for all people, to whom should you should prove that you have not judged unjustly, nor can any king or monarch confront you about those whom you have punished. You are righteous, and you rule all things righteously, deeming it alien to your power to condemn anyone who does not deserve to be punished. For your strength is the source of righteousness, and your sovereignty over all causes you to spare all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is a portion of Psalm 86, and the refrain will be, Teach me your way, O Lord. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you, that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. Teach me your way, O Lord. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the nethermost pit. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent men seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes. Teach me your way, O Lord. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Teach me your way, O Lord. Show me a sign of your favour, so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed, because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Teach me your way, O Lord. Let us pray. God of mercy, fill us with the love of your name and help us to proclaim you before the world, that all peoples may celebrate your glory in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The epistle this morning is from Romans 8 verses 12 to 25. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery, to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us, for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God, for the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one 
who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies, for in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds amongst the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the household came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then do these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned and gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with the fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My life is in your hand to deliver me. Shine on your servant with the light of your love. My life is in your hand to deliver me. Shine on your servant with the light of your love. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Shine on your servant with the light of your love. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Shine on your servant the light of your life. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Shine on your servant with the light of your life. I put my trust in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad because of your mercy. Shine on your servant with the light of your life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. My, My life is in your hand, deliver me. Shine on your servant with the light of your life. I speak. 
agree to in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please be seated? Now, I'll give you all a choice. Do you want me to stand here? Can you all hear me, or would you prefer me to use the mic? Okay, let's try this again. Would you prefer me to stand here, and can you all hear me, or would you like me to use the mic? Stand there. Okay, if, I can't, if you can't hear me, wave, because my, wave madly, because my glasses are fogging up, um, so I can see you and I can speak up. It's good to be with you today. I'm really happy to be here. Um, Williams Lake last week were my guinea pigs. They were my first Paris visit. You still, unfortunately, are my guinea pigs, so bear with me. Um, one of, I'm going to talk about a few things today. Firstly, I want to address the gospel. The gospel is very stark. And that gospel has been used very negatively. And I want to address that. Mostly, but I'll come back to it, so hold on. I want to talk about our Christian life. I want to talk about our Christian life because it's very important to remember especially in the COVID times, but when all of this passes by us in the future, whenever that be. Who are you? And this is a very existential question. Who are you? Think about that. Who does God say that you are? And that, perhaps, is a more important question for all of us as Christians. Who does God say that we are? What does, how does God address us? And I'm going to actually emphasize something to you all, because this is very important. Because one of the things I truly believe is that the church is not dying. I do not believe the church is dying. And this isn't the, well, he's the bishop-elect, he's got to say that, right? <laughs> you can laugh during my sermons, too, it's okay. <laughs> no, really, you can't, it's okay. I don't believe the church is dying, and I'm not just saying that. What I believe is the church is asleep. The church is asleep and we've forgotten our way. We've forgotten our way of who God is not just calling us to be, but who God has told us we are. Now, I didn't warn him about this, but usually anybody who sits right there is used as an example. <laughs> Sorry, Sean. Okay? This is Sean. God knows him, you know him. Who is God calling him to be? He's a worker. Who else is God calling? God is calling you, sorry Sean, no, no pressure. <laughs> God is calling you to be a witness to Jesus Christ in word and in deed. Now, unfortunately, when we talk witness, we get a very character view of that in our head. Or if you've grown up in the television generation, which all of you have, you say, be a witness to Jesus Christ instantaneously. 90% of us get a picture of a television. Okay. That's not what Sean is necessarily called to. If you are, let me know. I want to cut. <laughs> That's not necessarily what Sean is called to. Sean is called, as every single one of us are, to be a witness to Jesus Christ. And that is subjective to each and every one of us. At work, Sean is called to be a witness to Jesus Christ. 
At home, Sean is called to be a witness at Jesus Christ. When Sean is on the road driving, he is called to be a witness to Jesus Christ, even to the people who cut you off. Okay? <laughs> what does that look like for Sean? Only Sean knows. Okay? And that doesn't mean you go up to somebody and say this. Have you accepted? Sorry, gang. Have you accepted Jesus Christ into your heart as uh, 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 your personal Lord and Savior? No. It looks like this. You doing okay today? How are you, really? You worried? You scared? How's your family? Did he talk about God? Did he talk about converting somebody? Did he talk to somebody about saying, hey, guess what? Everything you've done in your life was wrong and you need to change. No, he didn't, did he? And this is the important thing. Being a witness to Jesus Christ is about love, not conversion. Being, to witness, being a witness to Jesus Christ is about compassion and caring. It's about sacrifice. It's about giving. In the early church, and we're talking the ancient church, we have records of Paul Con converting people by preaching. Same, in, uh, same with the apostles. What was more effective was the act of love. People, we have this from other records of the church. People saying, why are you so nice? Why are you so giving? You actually like other people. What's wrong with you? <laughs> And people will say, well, that's because I know Jesus, and I follow his teaching. People are like, oh, who is Jesus? Well, come and see. As Paul said, they will know we are Christians by our love. And this is the church asleep. Because people know us by other deeds. Um, I see younger people, so I'm not going to pick on you. I'm not going to come down there and pick on you, so it's okay. But if you ask their peers, your friends, to define Christianity, most of them are going to have a very negative response. If you ask people of my generation to do the same thing, they're going to have a very negative response. We as the church have to wake up. We as the church have to reclaim our love. <laughs> and I'm going to break it to you. It starts right here. And right here. Everybody close your eyes. Think of somebody in the parish. I know I do this talk in other parishes, so I'm not thinking on thing like oh, just for full disclosure. Think of somebody in this parish. Think of somebody you've had a negative interaction. I'll leave that open in. Do you still love that person? Yes or no? The answer, you can open your eyes. The answer must be, yes, I do. Not a flippant, 
cheap, gray sort of, oh, yes, I love everybody. No, that's like, you know what? They hurt me. They irritated me. But I still love them. If they were in need, I would support them. If they were hungry, I would feed them. That is that love that every single one of us are called to be. This is truly what Paul called the royal priesthood of God. Not the clerical priesthood. Our job is to serve and empower you in your work, in your lives, in your mission in the world. This is how we wake up. This is how the church becomes who God wants us to be. By our love. By our compassion. So that people can say, to you, Sean, as an example, you're so kind, you're so loving, you're so generous. What's wrong with you? <laughs> and people can, and you can say back, I'll work with me. Come on. <laughs> because you know Jesus. Does that sound difficult? For most people, the answer is no, it doesn't sound difficult. It's hard in practice. And I acknowledge that. But I'm going to tell you, a I'm going to use a word that makes every Anglican in every parish in North America squirm. It's actually kind of neat because when there's not social distancing, you can every actually ever see everybody move. <coughs> it's called change. Part of being a Christian is change. Changing our attitudes, changing our words, changing our hearts. Who here likes to change? <laughs> okay, I got one honest person. Okay? Most of us don't. The rest of you are being honest too. Nobody likes to change. Nobody likes being told, well, you have to change. But if we truly believe in the message of Jesus Christ and his love, that God loves a broken world, that God still loves a world full of people who don't necessarily make the right decision, that God loves a world that is full of people like me, then if we truly believe that, we can change. We can reclaim who God wants us to be. We can wake up from our sleep. We can have hope that there is a church. And this is what brings me back to the parable. Okay. Often that parable in today's gospel is used as this. I have a piece of wheat. I'm awesome. Sorry about you. <laughs> awesome, that is how it's used. We're so convinced of our own righteousness that we look at others and say, you're not as good as I am. As opposed to saying, I'm a piece of wheat. Might be a little bitter. Might not be as refined. So is he. So is she. So is every single body else I meet, whether I know them or not. I can look at the most broken person and say, they can be. They might be. They are. That is love in action. That is love 
in the best, purest form where we can look at every single person and say, this person is a beloved child of God just like me. As broken, as perfect, as making mistakes as possibly can be. This is the church at its best. This is the church full of love. This is the church that has hope. So no, we are not done. We're learning to live that. We're learning to be who God has called us. So, your task, and I like to give challenges. Your task tonight, when you go home, before your head hits the pillow, you are going to say a prayer. Your prayer is this. God, show me how I can be more loving. And change my heart so I can live that. That's it. Nothing terrible, nothing serious, nothing big and grand. Show me how I can be better and transform me so that I can. Show me how I can love and make me more love. This is the prayer of every Christian. This is why we gather. This is the underlying principle of our liturgy, of our worship, of our sermon, everything. So that we can learn how to be more loving and empowered to do it. This is our hope. This is our life. This is our calling as followers of Jesus Christ. May God give us the grace and strength to wake up and be his love and show his love in our world. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Please let us be filled with your spirit. Wherever we go, let us spread love, joy, peace, goodness, and faithfulness. Let us desire to become more like you and to worship you in all we do. Thank you for always going before us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Dear friends in Christ, John, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved my goodness to ourselves. We are to be sorry and we come to your name. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. By being tried in your will and walk in your way. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. of spiritual communion in our service today. It is an ancient tradition and is available to all when we are not able to receive the bread and wine for whatever reason. After we have said the prayer asking Jesus to come to us spiritually, we will sit quietly while listening for and being with God with some music. And we begin with the Lord's Prayer. And together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Let us pray. Jesus, I have offered to see you in my heart, and I cannot do it in the sacramental way. Therefore, I ask you to come to me and fill me with your presence, your peace, and your love. Grant me, Lord, the graces of my angels. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for feeding us in this spiritual way with Jesus Christ. May we who follow Christ bring light to others. We who the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so that we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the strength of God uphold us. May the power of God keep us. May the wisdom of God teach us. May the hand of God enfold us. May the shield of God protect us. May the host of God guard us against the spirits of evil and the temptations of the world. May our Christ be with us, Christ before us, Christ in us, Christ over us. May your salvation, O God, be always ours, this day and forevermore. Amen. 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 Amen.